Jesus, thank you so much for the word that you've placed in Jonna. Thank you that she is your daughter and she speaks from your heart. So God, I ask that every word that would go forth tonight would bear fruit in our hearts, that it would actually birth a transformation, that, that we would look different because of what we take in tonight, that we would trust you more, that we'd believe in you more, that we'd love you more, that we'd look more like you after tonight's message. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Let's give it up for Jonna. Hi, guys. I kind of like the light because I can't see any of y'all, so it works in my favor. So yeah, Nathan's right. I've been super, super nervous to speak again, and um, I did know like a month ago that I was supposed to speak, and life got really busy, and I was really stressed out, and I was asking the Lord, like, what do you want me to speak? But then I was busy and wasn't really listening, and um, so finally... I had my phone in my hand, and I'm like, I'm going to call Kyle, and I'm going to tell him I'm not speaking. I can't do it. I don't know what to speak on. And so <laughs> I uh, had my phone in my hand, and I said, okay, God, I'll, I'll ask you one more time, and I'll actually listen this time. And if you give me something, then I'll do it. But if not, then, you know, Kyle can figure it out. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. Um, so I asked. I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? And to be honest, guys, like, it's kind of sad, like, that I really didn't listen because he answered so quickly and so clearly, and he said, tell them I'm faithful. And I was super excited to talk about that because that's, like, the word that I describe the Lord as when people ask me, like, what character of God do you, like, appreciate? What do you, how do you describe him? And I'm like, he's faithful. Well course that's the one thing that the enemy decided let's attack that this month and so um, I felt kind of like David I was like I feel attacked on all sides I can't even hear you where are you God, I know you're faithful but I can't even remember what have you done maybe you're like me maybe not but um Sometimes God seems really far away, and he seems really silent. And you know his promises, and you've seen him move, but at the same time, you feel completely abandoned by him. In the Psalms, Psalms 22, David describes this feeling like this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far away from me? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. He later goes on to describe this feeling as well in Psalms 28. He says, don't turn a deaf ear when I call you, God. If all I get from you is deafening silence, I'd be better off in the black hole. You know who else felt abandoned? Jesus did. He actually says and quotes this exact psalm in Matthew when he's on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? <sighs> There's a lot of areas that I felt like this in my life. God's promised me something, and then it seems like, what's happening? Where's it at? He's promised even my voice. I'm more introverted. Um... Kyle calls my voice volume a three. Um, and yet God's like, I want to use your voice. And I said, okay, but no one's listening. We were building the uh, collective, and uh, we knew God said to start it, but there was only like five people there, and it was awkward. God, you said to start this, but it's awkward. God, I know they say I should hear your voice, but... I don't hear you. What do they mean when they say I can hear your voice and you're speaking? God, I've been neglected. I've been hurt. And honestly, I feel neglected and hurt by you too, God. God, it's been a while. Where are you? Are you even working? Yeah. 
And you know who else waited a while? Abraham. And this is funny. I, I looked it up just to be sure. It says he waited 25 years for the promise of the son. I don't know if you guys know that, but that's a long time. I'm 24, so that's my entire life plus one year of just waiting for God to be faithful. But in Genesis, it says, Then Abram believed and trusted in the Lord. And that was before the promise was fulfilled. Do you guys know that Abraham is actually the first person in the Bible to call God trustworthy? And actually, the Hebrew word that he used to describe God as trustworthy is emet. Emmet means faithfulness and truth. Emmet has to do with stability and reliability. When referred to a person, it means someone is trustworthy. So, this is all before the promise was even fulfilled. So here we are. We're wallowing in our woes. You were forgotten again. You're having parent issues, relationship issues. You have no idea what your purpose is. Your walk with God is hanging on by a thread. And you're up to your neck in debt and depression. <laughs> so, here's a tip when you're dealing with life and the little demons are yelling in your face that God won't come through for you, that he won't be faithful. Ask the Lord to remind you first thing. I actually have a story for this. So back when we were starting SoFlow, <laughs> collective now, <laughs> um, Nathan was preaching and he had us all because we were a lot smaller. There was like seven of us. He said, we're going to take turns and out loud yell. Guys, my voice volume is a three. <laughs> we're going to yell and thank the Lord for how he set us free, how he's been faithful. And everyone was taking turns, and they all were doing an amazing job, yelling, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and um, I was shaking in my boots. I was like, please do not get to me. Please, I don't want to do this. And it wasn't even fear of speaking out loud. It was, I could not remember, what have you done, God? I still feel in pain. I still feel neglected. I still, I can't remember. And, and to be honest, I didn't ask him. I ran out of the room crying. <laughs> and then the night ended, and I, you know, I got out of that situation. But that feeling doesn't just go away. You know, when you're in that far into feeling like God is not faithful, it, like, lingers with you. And so a couple days later, I'm so pissed at God. And, I'm, and I, I mean, good for me. I was listening to worship music and uh, <laughs> driving home. And I was like, God, I'm so angry. And uh, God's so funny. One of Nathan's songs came on. And uh, one of the lyrics says, everything changes when you come. And I said, well, nothing's changing, God, so come. And I don't know fully what happened in that moment, except that that was enough for my mouth to be released, and for 10 minutes on my drive home, all I could do was thank him for his goodness, thank him for his faithfulness, yeah. prophesy the future, yeah. and peace came. Another way when you're dealing with life and lies and fear and not believing that God will be faithful is to read your Bible, out loud specifically. Remind your ears and soul of who God is. My um, church growing up used to do this thing. We were a little house church uh, that pretended like we were a mega church. <laughs> we were in a house with all the chairs lined up. Um, well, we had this thing called the Faith Aid, um, and basically it was like a little pamphlet with little sections like who you are in Christ, a bunch of scriptures, what you have in Christ, a bunch of scriptures for financial stuff, for fear stuff, a bunch of scriptures. And for like 30 minutes every service, we would just 
read through the whole thing. And uh, they sent them home with us, and my family had this thing we called Bible time on Saturdays for like three hours. We'd do it then too. And here's the thing. I didn't like it back then. I thought it was long and repetitive. But the reality was, as soon as life happened, those were the scriptures that came to mind. That's why it's called the faith aid. <laughs> and uh, there's something so valuable about like repeatedly reading and speaking over scripture over your life and your situations. I actually <laughs> have an analogy for this that I think is quite funny. Um, I got into juicing recently, and... Uh, <laughs> And, and, and I don't know about you guys, if you juice or anything, I'm really pretty new to it, but I um, started pre, like, prepping juicing for at least an extra day. So I have to take all the juicing stuff out every day. And so I make my two juices, I drink one for the day, and I stick the other one in the fridge. It's in, like, in a little mason jar. Well, if you know anything about juicing, after like five minutes, the separation happens, and there's like a thick layer on top and like a watery layer on the bottom. And it can be kind of gross looking, but all you have to do is shake it up and it's good as new. And I believe the word is like that for us. A lot of the times we know something, it's there, it's at this top layer of our lives, it's a pretty surface layer. But when we read the Bible, when we quote it over ourselves, when we repeatedly remind ourselves, you start shaking yourself up. I'm sure there's more of a message in that, like if you actually looked up the juicing stuff, but I, <laughs> I looked up briefly, and basically what I did find now is that all the vitamins and stuff are at the bottom, and so, you know, if you just kind of drink the top, you're not getting the good stuff, so shake yourself up. All right, so let me give you some scriptures to start to remind yourself that God is faithful. I'm not going to give you references because there's a few, so I'm just going to run right through them. But if you'd like them, I have them. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all the generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. If you are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Moses also goes on to explain the character of God like this. In Exodus 34, he says, that the Lord is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, has loyal love, and abounding in faithfulness. So if God is so faithful and trustworthy, how did the stories of David and Abraham end? So the psalm we read was in Psalms 28, and he was talking about being better off in a black hole. Well, he ends that psalm like this. Blessed be God, he heard me praying. He proved he's on my side. I've thrown my lot in with him. Now I'm jumping for joy and shouting and singing my thanks to him. Abraham was believing for a son. It took 25 years. But in Genesis 21, it says, God did what he promised. And at the very time God had set. I want to share like a story. I know I don't have a lot of time, but um, I want to share a story actually about money because I feel like that's sometimes an area that we feel like God might not be faithful in. And so I was working at a church and I was coming out of that season and uh, I wanted to start my own company, but I also was thinking maybe it'd be smart to get like a small part-time like hosting job or something because, you know, financial money. Um, until I got my business off the ground. Well, I applied for that job. They offered me the job. It was an amazing opportunity, but I was so stressed. I was like, why do I feel unrest? Like, is it just because I'm like shy and I don't want to start something new? Or like, is it the Lord? And I was in this struggle. I was like, why can't I get peace on this? It makes the most logical sense. 
And honestly, it got me so frustrated that I, it was like I snapped at Nathan one day and he's like, what is wrong? I was like, I can't do this. I don't know the answer. Um, and so Nathan went to go lead worship at a um, like tent revival meeting or whatever. And he's like, you should come. And I was like, I don't want to go. I'm so frustrated. I just want to cry in bed. I have no peace. But uh, thank you, Jesus, I did go. And I sat in the back, and I cried the whole time. And I was just like, Lord, you have to answer me in this. And uh, he, I realized in that moment that the reason I was so frustrated was because I didn't trust him to provide if I didn't take the job. I felt like I had to prove to Nathan that I could also add something to the table. I had seen God provide for Nathan, people coming out of the woodworks just to give him money. And even though we were married, I was like, nothing like that has ever happened to me. And out of the blue, some lady walks over and she says, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to give you this. And she hands me some money. And it was immediate peace. And I, I ended up not taking the job and I started my company and we have not been in lack since. The Lord was faithful in that for me. Another quick story of how the Lord's been faithful for, for me and this is like really big deal for me, you guys might not understand fully, but I talked a little bit last time about my ex, and that was a relationship that lasted for three years, and it was a secret the entire time. None of my family knew, none of my coworkers knew. I was living a lie, and honestly, it got, I got really good at lying. And I had my first panic attack during that time, well, ever since I really gave my life to the Lord, I've been, like, really pushing through and trying not to lie. Like, I hate even playing games that make you have to, like, pretend because I'm like, I don't want to lie because I know how easy for me it was to just slip into that lie. Well, I called my dad for Father's Day, and um, we were just talking about life and the things of the Lord. And he's like, let me pray for you before you go. And uh, as he's praying for me, he thanks the Lord for my honest heart. And in that moment for me, it was like, God, you're so faithful. You took me from a place that lied to a place that was such honesty. So maybe you're like David and feel abandoned, or maybe you're like Abraham and you've been promised something from God. Or perhaps something inside of you is just feels dead. I'm here to tell you that your story isn't over. And first, I can't even say this, gosh. First Thessalonians. <laughs> it says, he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. And just in case you didn't know... In 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, God is the one who saved and called us. That means you all are called, which means he is faithful to you. And I know this message may not be for everyone in here. You guys might not be struggling with this. But even if it's just for one person, I just wanted to tell you that God fought so hard with me to get me here just so you could know that he is faithful. Yeah. You guys can stand up. They're going to go back into worship, but as we do, I want you guys to ask yourself if there's any areas that you don't believe that the Lord will be faithful. And take that to the Lord. And if you've seen him be faithful, thank him for that. I'm going to read one more scripture. Psalms 139.5. 
136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillful. 